Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a Visual Studio Code extension to program using MicroPython on the microbit. So you need to have a couple of things ready on your system in order to use this extension. First of all, you need to have Visual Studio Code installed, obviously. The second thing is you need to have Python installed. You can verify if you have Python or not by either opening the terminal. Over here I just open my terminal on, on my system or you can also use the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code so this is completely up to you if you're on Windows you might want to look at the command line and type Python uh, if you see something like this so where basically the system is prompting you to input some to input something <clears throat> then uh, Python is installed and you're good to go okay so make sure Visual Studio Code is installed and Python is installed then head over the extension tab and search for microbit. You will find several extensions. The one you want is microbit python. You install it. Uh, you might also want to install another extension that I have already installed. It's called the serial port helper. And this will become very useful uh, for debugging your code, basically for printout from uh, the microbit and being able to visualize that on your computer. I have already this installed, so I'm not going to install it again. With this done, you're pretty much ready to get started. So you want to plug in your microbit and you should have basically this case, this situation. You have your microbit and it's plugged in with a USB cable. Uh, you can see here I have two different microbit, by the way. Uh, version 1 and version 2. Version 2 can be recognized by um, these little notches down here. Uh, it has more memory, which means you can have larger files, basically more code you can upload on this one. Uh, it also has extra capabilities that version 1 does not have, but this extension will work with any of the two. So I'm going to put aside the version 2. I'm going to just keep version 1 over here. You also notice that it is connected to a USB cable. This is not only a power cable, this is a data cable. What does it mean? It basically means that if you plug it in, as you can see my mouse cursor over here, as soon as I plug it in, the microbit is mounted on my operating system and I can see it. Okay. So if you don't see this one, probably you're not using a data cable. In that case, it will not work. The extension will not work for you. Okay, so once you're done with all of this and the microbit is uh, plugged in, you can simply uh, go to View Command Palette. We'll open this embedded window over here. Or alternatively, you can do Command Shift P, which is this command here, Command Shift P, or on Windows, Control Shift P, and then simply type microbit Python and you will find all the commands you actually can use. So the first command we want to use just one time, it's this one, flash MicroPython environment on microbit. I'm going to click on this one. And at the same time, I'm going to show you what is actually happening to the device. So on the back of the device, this LED is now blinking. That means we are uploading something on the device. It's completely removing any code that was here and installing MicroPython. I have a successful message down here, MicroPython successfully installed, and I'm good to go. Okay, so this is, you have to do it one time, but you have to do it, okay? And if you don't do this, no Python code will be able to run on your device, okay? So again, if you didn't follow me, is Command Shift P, and then flash MicroPython environment on microbit. Once you're done with that, what you want to do is to initialize um, a project. To do so, I create an empty folder, like on my desktop, and uh, give it a name, project. Please make sure not to use space in this folder name, okay? I drag it in, and my workspace is project. Again, no space in this name. Then, Command Shift P, and now I search for MicroPython, initialize the workspace. So I click on this, and you should see a short list appearing. One, it tells you, it tells you basically which template project you want to use to start. You can use an hello world or you can use an empty project. An empty project basically will not modify your current folder. Um, I'm going to use an hello world instead. 
I click on this and I see a main.py file. You must have a main.py file in order to, um, to get your code uploaded. So if uh, the uh, extension will not find a main.py file, it will not work out. So let me actually increase the size of this. Editor zoom in. Okay. So now what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to upload this. Command Shift P, flash. But I will choose flash sketch on microbit. Before we use flash MicroPython environment on microbit, we already did. Now we do flash sketch on microbit. And as soon as I do that, I see hello world appearing over here. To show that this is working, I'm going to change with, say, I. Let's do that again. Command Shift P, flash sketch on my computer. And as soon as I do that, I will appear. OK? Um, if it does not appear to you, but you see a successful message, like here, file successfully uploaded, um, you might want to reset the device. How you reset it, you just click this button here. That's a reset and you do that manually. So I found out that on Windows, uh, you can upload the sketch, but then you have to manually reset the device. So basically you click it, where is it? and then it will work, okay? On Mac, it seems it's resetting automatically after uploading the sketch. So let's do a more complex example. Um, let's use uh, maybe uh, something like this, um, while true. And I'm going to simply print something like hello world. And then I'm going to sleep for one second, so 1,000 milliseconds. OK. Uh, you might wonder where this command comes from. These commands are command of the uh, microbit, uh, and we are importing them. And those are inside of this folder. Okay, so this is actually here just for IntelliSense. It will work even if you don't have this folder. But when you initialize the project, this folder is going to be made for you over here. So IntelliSense will work. Okay, so let's try to upload this. So I flash it, but really nothing seems to happen because we are printing out something, but where does this go? And here is the extension I was mentioning before, the serial port helper. You click on this one and you see the available serial port. You want to select this one, make sure that the baud rate is uh, uh, 1500 to 115, 200. So this is the baud rate you have. And down here, you can choose if you want hex mode or string mode, keep string mode. Then I'm going to select on this, become green, and I see a hello world printed every second. So everything is working perfectly. Great. Let's make something a little bit more complex. Then we continue with this extension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another file called uh, maybe helper actually, helper.py. And uh, over here, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, something, something very simple. I want to create a helper function called the test. So I'm going to have that test and I have a message. And this message, maybe what I want to do is uh, I want to, so ignore this, pop it up by mistake. I want to display the message. Okay. Again, you see these errors because it doesn't know what is display. So what you want to do is from microbit, import everything. And this will make IntelliSense working. Messages MSJ, MSG. All right, so we have this uh, very simple test function. What I want to do is I'm over here. And now before we start, I want to print the message. So what I'm going to do is from uh, helper, import everything. And in this case here, I'm going to have my function test and say welcome. Right? And now I'm going to flash it and welcome will appear over here. And at the same time, you will find that the serial port is still working and we're still printing hello world every second. So perfect. Everything is working. And basically with this simple example, I was able to show you that you can have multiple files as long as you have the main file called main.py, uh, all the other files are going to be uploaded as well. All the files inside of this folder, Python files or any other file, will be uploaded on the microbit. Okay, so watch out. Only this current folder, all the files are going to be uploaded on the microbit. How can I verify this? You can actually try to remove these files from the microbit. So I can remove a single file. And we find there is a list of files 
that I can remove from my microbit, helper.py, main.py. And if I click, for example, on helper.py, I'm removing that file. And now I try to remove another single file, and you will find there is a main.py. Okay, you can also remove all of the files, remove all the files from the microbit over here. And now, basically, there is no more file on the microbit. So let me re-upload this again. I flash it. I want to show you also something interesting. So say, for example, I upload it, everything is working. But now I'm going to delete these two files and I'm going to trash them. Or, or maybe I'm going to trash one and maybe the other one I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to simply modify with something silly. OK, so I have helper.py that I modified and main completely disappear. Now what I can do is I can copy a file from the micro bit so I can fetch it back. Since it's on the micro bit, I can fetch it. So for example, over here, let me fetch helper first. And as soon as I want to fetch it, it's asking me if I want to override. I want to override it. And now helper.py will contain the correct version that I had before. Now let me fetch also the other one, um, the main, and uh, it will just get it without asking me to override it because there is no other one. And here I have back my files and I can modify them and re-upload them and so on. Uh, the last uh, command I want to show you, it's uh, this one called fetch, fetch examples from online. So you can do this once in a while. I'm going to do it now. And you fetch successfully all the examples. And now when I try to initialize again, initialize my project, you will find there are more projects actually available. I still have the hello world. I still have empty, which means no modifying my current space. But I also have other two, buttons and memory stats. So say, for example, I want to get the buttons example, All right? So this one is going to modify my main. My helper is not going to be modified. I'm going to simply delete it because I don't need it anymore. And now I'm going to flash this one up on the micro bit. And now I have, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, it seems I correctly flashed it, I believe. No, I did not correctly flush it. So let me reflush it again. Uh, I fetch by mistake instead of flush. I flush them and now there is a sad face. When I click on A, according to the code, it becomes a little smile. Okay. Again, if you don't see this happening right away, you might want to click the reset button on the back. With this, this is pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you enjoy the extension as well. And if there is any problem, please reach out and write an issue on GitHub so that actually can be fixed. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.